What's up everybody? Welcome to Chris Cass. I'm back with another Dwarf Fortress mod showcase and this one may end up being the biggest mod I've ever covered on the channel. This mod is called Dwarvamon, a Pokemon mod for Dwarf Fortress from the creator Fire Phoenix 11 on Steam Workshop. It brings a massive number of creatures from Pokemon generations 1 through 9 to Dwarf Fortress. Just as a little background, I'm not what you would call an expert in Dwarf Fortress or Pokemon games. However, I do know what I enjoy in both series and what aspects would be fun in a crossover like this. Before we go over my experience with the mod deeper, I'll show you how to get the mod installed. To recreate the mod setup featured in this video, first go to Dwarf Fortress's workshop section on Steam. You'll want to download these three mods. First is the base mod and the most essential, Dwarvamon. Next up, you want the Dwarven Entity All mod and the Dwarvamon Graphics mod. Subscribe to all three of these, and at this point, you can load up your Dwarf Fortress game and create a new world. Your world specifications are completely up to you. I went for a smaller world with a lot of beasts to maximize my encounters with rare Pokemon types. Now go to the Mods tab and insert the mods into your load order. You're gonna want Dwarvamon first before the other two mods. Now you just generate your world and you're in. This mod adds an astounding amount of content to the base game. The biggest addition being over 900 Pokemon from generations one through nine. They can battle, evolve, and be trained similar to your typical Pokemon game. To go along with that, there are new crafting stations like the Pokemon Center, Fossil Lab, and Evolution Chamber and hundreds of new craftable items pulled straight from the shops of Pokemon. And of course, you can throw Pokeballs. Kind of. You can basically throw these crafted Pokeballs with a new weapon called the Pokeball Launcher. And they're essentially a ranged weapon that does extra damage to Pokemon. To give you guys a glimpse of what's possible with this mod, I'm gonna give you a tour of my very own Pokemon Village. It's called Letter Zeal. The government is actually called the Alliance of Balls. So, you know, we like Pokeballs around here. This settlement has around 100 settlers and over 30 Pokemon. So there's a lot of variety of types and styles. I mean, I've been working on this place for weeks, guys. I, I think it shows. We've got 11,000 food, which usually I only have like 2,000, 3,000 with a settlement this size. I actually have a zone that is dedicated to Pokemon breeding, which does not work like the base game at all. Uh, basically, you use uh, nest boxes, uh, which in the base game you'd use for chickens, other birds. Uh, Pokemon lay eggs, so <laughs> if you put a nest box in their zone, um, they will actually use it. And uh, as you can see, this one is claimed by a Charmander. Um, I've mainly just been breeding Charmanders and shield ons. Looks like this one is actually claimed by a Metacham, which is like a weird mushroom martial artist Pokemon. <laughs> They're pretty weird. It, it, Pokemon fans know what I'm talking about, but anytime I mention a Pokemon, I'm gonna show it to you guys on screen so you know what I'm talking about. Some of my favorite Pokemon we've got, um, cause there's, there's a ton and every time you get new settlers, they just start bringing their, their pets, basically their Pokemon. So some of my favorites, we've got an un, an unknown, which those are just really weird. <laughs> it's just an eyeball and each unknown has a different shape. So this one's a V. You can start collecting them kind of like the alphabet. And each Pokemon you have, it has a little visual description for you. So um, if you ever wanted a really detailed description of a Pokemon, Dwarf Fortress has it now. My favorite Pokemon has been this Wardrizzle, which is like a water type. He shoots his finger guns at you. He's actually kind of part of the army. So um, I also have a war toxtricity, which is like a lightning type. But overall, it's actually been like a surprisingly like easy playthrough. I had some of the typical problems. Uh, the subterranean, there is a mod for subterranean Pokemon. I forgot to install it. There is no animals <laughs> in my uh, caverns down below, but there is forgotten beasts. So basically terrifying beasts are the only things in my caverns now. I have one sort of locked away down there. 
So yeah, this thing is freaking terrifying. It's Nanub the Playful, <laughs> but it doesn't look playful to me. It has deadly dust. I don't even want to know what that does. So we lost a few dwarves down there. Uh, we, we just sort of locked it away and, you know, we just hope it never gets out. Let me show you guys the lab area. Um, we actually have a way to trigger evolutions for Pokemon. So I have that on a repeated task, just having it do it forever. Um, and I've actually gotten a few to evolve. I've gotten the, I've gotten a Charizard evolved up and that thing is really strong. It's kind of like your typical Dwarf Fortress game, but all the animals have powers now, so it can be a little crazy in the fights. Um, I actually had a, uh, a huge blunder in a different timeline. Uh, I'll show you guys now. So as you guys can see, uh, my Charizard went a little overboard and it burned the whole map down. Unfortunately, I did not catch it on camera, but you can see the devastation it left behind. Um, I mean, we had we had dead people, dead Pokemon. We lost our entire wood supply, um, all to beat this thievil. So like, be careful which Pokemon you put outside because uh, the elements do actually interact with the environment. So if you have a fire type, they could cause a fire and kill everybody. <laughs> So you got to be real careful with that, but it also could be cool combos. Um, say you wanted to set a fire, like maybe you wanted to create sort of kill zone for uh, attackers. Um, you could actually do that if you plan it out right. Overall, I've seriously enjoyed this mod. It's been probably my favorite overhaul mod to date. What I really think makes this mod stand out is that it brings the interesting depth of the dwarf characters to the animals of your world. They go from just being a way to farm resources to uh, hunting and combat ready companions with hundreds of different abilities. The increase in crafting options and new strategies based on which Pokemon you're running make it very replayable as well as based on your biome. It's not without its flaws. I think that the Pokemon mechanics, the centerpiece of the games this mod is based on, could use a change. Instead of being a weapon type, I think it would be great if they were maybe a reskinned animal trap with varying catch rates based on the type of Pokeball. And another thing is the music. Having the standard Dwarf Fortress music does sort of break the Pokemon immersion a little bit. Um, so an add-on that would add more Game Boy DS style tracks would make it feel a lot more like a Pokemon game. So originally, I was gonna end this episode here, but I'm like, I can't have a Pokemon video without a Pokemon battle. So we're gonna make our own in Dwarf Fortress's arena mode. First thing I had to do was figure out how many Pokemon we would be battling. So I used this free dice roller at freediceroller.com. Of course, we rolled six Pokemon, so it's gonna be sort of a battle royale, free for all situation with whoever surviving being on top. Next up, we had to determine which Pokemon we're gonna be battling. Using this website, randompokemon.org, uh, we generated six different Pokemon for the battle. Uh, first, we had a Hoot Hoot, which I guess is like an owl thing. Next up was a Mega Pidgeot, which is a giant version of, you know, it's a basically a pigeon. A lion Pokemon called a Pyroar. This reindeer Pokemon called a Stantler. This terrifying looking Terrakian. And finally, an Inke, which just kind of looks like the friend squid from Finding Nemo. Out of these six, I was already betting on the Terrakian and the Pyroar to win because the other ones are just small forest animals and they are giant alpha predators. <laughs> so uh, I throw them all into the arena. I put some obstacles and stuff like that and I let them duke it out. To absolutely no one's surprise, the Terrakian completely destroyed the competition. The Pyroar was maybe holding up for a second, but ultimately the Terrakian won and claimed its title as the victor. Now I'm a little confused because I set it to non-lethal, but uh, I'm pretty sure they didn't make it. <laughs> so uh, if, for those who don't want to see Pokemon get hurt, set this to training mode or you're going to have some disappointment there. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. It's been great making these Dwarf Fortress videos. I know there's been a little bit of a gap, but 
they take a while to make and I want to make them right for you guys. So thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.